Heidi fucking ho, boys. Miss me? Yeah, it's me, Kelly Maxwell, a.k.a. Dana Lorenzo, And you're fucking listening to whatever fucking podcast this is. What is it? Sh- Ash, you don't fucking know. Shut up. You're listening to the sun. Oh, my. Pablo. Okay. You're listening to the fucking Suns and Shadows podcast on this network. So fucking subscribe or die. Fist bump. Welcome back once again to Suds and Shadows cast. We're back for another round of the lost, forgotten, and canceled TV series from yesteryear. We're celebrating our anniversary this month, and that, of course, means more Bruce Gamble. I am your host, Jeff Bly. And I am your red right hand, Big Kev Smith. I'm the dread pirate, William McCutt. All right. And we've also called in the cavalry on this one. We have our very own Briscoe and Dixie joining us. That's right. We have Steve and Izzy from the Everything I Learned from Movies podcast has joined us. Thank you for joining us. And please let us know about your podcast and and what you do over there. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Well, thank you. And thank you for getting the name of our podcast correct. (laughs) That's right, Izzy. No, (laughs) I got to talk like I have a massive chin. Uh, (laughs) Square up that jaw. That's right. Uh, well, over here on this their podcast, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, everything I learned from movies, talk about bad to questionable movies. And, that we uh, genuinely love. Yeah, I mean, usually we end up loving them. But yeah. they basically just find out, like, there's always some something good and even bad movies. And uh, yeah, we, we find those little nuggets of perfection within the clusterfuck. Yeah, we've also interviewed, gosh, almost 50 different directors, actors, all kinds of everything from uh, Thomas Jane to Dana Gould mm-hmm. to... We're circling around the patron saint of our podcast, Nicolas Cage. So yeah. much so we've done like, a, uh, well, obviously Thomas Jane is Eskimo brother, but uh, <laughs> his real life brother, Christopher Coppola, yep. a couple of directors and other people that worked with us. Uh, his stand-in. His stand-in for like 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. One of these days he's going to return our calls. Oh, and we also happen to be BJCP certified oh, beer yes. judges. So we also review good beers in the midst of our podcast. Yeah, is that, Ooh, we are sending some there? notices to you. <laughs> oh well we have from rogue brewing dead guy ale yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you guys Which from is, oregon i know we're we're in utah we, we oh, are in utah. we got this through a state ran liquor store because that's the only way yes. to get beer over five percent <laughs> we have been to the mothership in newport and it is magical Absolutely. i was gonna say i live like an hour away from their brewery <laughs> yeah oh, <it's, laughs> so good uh blessed life <laughs> and if, if uh, our guests out there here crunching in the background, my apologies. We also have our pod dog, Mr. Sushi, and I gave him a chewy. He's eating a beef trachea right now. Nice. <laughs> Got to keep the dogs entertained. Right. And now the people are entertained. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and we'll get right in. Now, have you both experienced this show when it first aired or what are some of your earlier memories and what do you think of the show? Uh, I remember watching it. Yeah, I guess I was 12 or yeah, 12 or 13 or something when it was out. Um, I remember loving it. Um, just, I don't know, growing up, like like my dad was a cop and stuff growing up. But you know, we it, it seemed like all the reruns and stuff just when I was watching TV were all, old shows like, you know, Brett Maverick and Rockford Files and, you know, Adam's Family and stuff like that. And this is obviously all those kind of rolled together. And so it worked out pretty good for me. Down to even having Gomez Adams. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had caught like one or two episodes of this as a kid. My dad was sort of like a raccoon and just likes to steal things out of dumpsters. So we regularly had hacked cable, which meant even our local channels were never on the same channel, depending on what wavelength we were tuned into. So I had no idea what channel anything was on. But uh, I remember watching a couple episodes loving it and then never being able to find it again and nobody i knew had ever even heard of it oh. i had made this up this was a yeah. fever dream and then i met steve <laughs> I was like briscoe county hell yeah i've got the first season on dvd and then i was like oh wait there was only one season <laughs> <laughs> a very long season at 27 episodes but yeah still one yeah season nonetheless yeah, that's why I was like, oh, yeah, I know I've got like five or six discs or something. So it's got to be two seasons, right? <laughs> yeah, I pulled out my set. I'm like eight discs. I'm like, what the hell is on all of these? <laughs> <laughs> all the behind the scenes interviews. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's like all of like disc eight. Now, uh, <laughs> Kevin, uh, let's go with you. What, what are your memories of this one? Oh, dude, I religiously watched this show. It was like one of my favorite things coming on after uh, The Simpsons and uh, not Saturday Night Live and Living Color. 
it was on uh, for me in that same time period or same block. In living color. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I recognized that it was Ash, and so it's like I just I stuck with it. I saw the pilot, and then would watch it every Sunday night after that. It was right. Sunday, Sunday or Thursday. For you, it was Thursday or Sunday? Interesting. I think so. Was it paired up with like X Files for you, or was it no? Like you said, it was like around Simpsons and a Living Color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Fox syndication. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> then I want to say uh, Married to Children came on after that too. Oh wow! Okay. I think it's a little different. And Will, how about you? What are your memories of this one? Never saw it. I mean, wasn't really allowed to watch Fox. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah, That's Fox ridiculous. had its questionable content, as we <laughs> heard like half of them from Kevin already. <laughs> Simpsons married with children, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Like yeah, I mean, they, they look so cliche now with like Family Guy. And <laughs> oh my God! Right, they've gone back in time almost with some of the. <laughs> so they have shows. all those those silly as a mask singer and <laughs> you'll never guess who cooked this cake and you know shit like that <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah my memory of this i religiously watched this i was in high school i don't remember about which grade i could probably figure it out if i did the math but i've done enough math today to not want to do that right now but <laughs> i know it was paired up with x files for me because that was my friday nights I watched both of them. I like this way more than I liked X-Files. And I'm a big fan of X-Files early seasons. So this was like Friday night was glorious for me. And I watched this to the very and unfortunately bitter end until it was uh, canceled, unfortunately. And it broke my goddamn heart. It's one of the very first shows I ever watched and got canceled. And I was like, what the fuck just happened here? Where's my show? And the way it ended, it kind of felt, you know, on hindsight, you know, it had a good ending. But at the time, it, it broke my heart. But my funny story about my memory of this show is when I watched Evil Dead 2 in college. And that was the, my first introduction was Army of Darkness. But then it wasn't until Evil Dead 2 that I'm watching. I'm like, oh, that's that dude from Briscoe. And like, I never <laughs> knew that Army of Darkness was a sequel to the other movies. So when I watched Evil Dead 2 in college, I'm like, this is a dude from Briscoe. What's he doing in this? And that's when <laughs> it sent me down the rabbit hole of like Bruce Campbell filmography in general. And oh, that, that's I, my fun little story and memory from Briscoe. I, I have a very similar story because yeah, I, I mean, um, I had seen Army of Darkness before, but yeah, Briscoe was like my real introduction to Bruce Campbell as a kid. Yeah. And then the next thing I saw him in was probably my favorite movie of all time, 1995's Congo. And when yes. Bruce Campbell, Briscoe County himself shows up in the first couple of minutes, I'm like, fuck yeah, this movie's going to be great. We, he's, we, we got a great hero. And, but, yep. Oh shit, he's dead. Two minutes like, later. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then they replace it. Condo. <laughs> yeah, then they replace it with Dylan Walsh. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Bring Bruce back. <laughs> it should have been flipped around, in my opinion. Oh, Shitty Peter, we want Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I remember watching Congo too and being like, oh, Bruce is in this. And then mm -hmm. he was killed. I'm like, okay, there that took out my complete interest in this movie in like I, no time. I didn't know he was gonna pull a dark man and just show up for five seconds. He's actually or, done that in a couple movies, like Dark Man, <laughs> Congo, Spider Man's um, <laughs> The Intruder, which is a horror slasher movie. He shows up literally the last five seconds and has like the last scene with one line. And it's like, what the <laughs> hell just happened here? Escape from LA. Yeah, so like Escape I'm super jealous because when I was growing up, what came on before X Files was Diagnosis Murder. Oh, with the uh, Andy Griffith, with, uh, Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah Dick, Dick Van, Dyke, Van Dyke. That's right. Oh, yeah. shit, that's right. I, saw I told that you. Show and then, like, NBC. what came on before that was Matlock. Ugh. So it was like Andy old Griffith. people, yep. old people, doctor lawyer shows in the next files, <laughs> which, which then I'm had not lie. Adam's family. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy both of those. <laughs> All three of them actually. I, I can't say shit. I used to love Perry Mason, so it's oh, all good. Yeah, me too. Like right. I, I watched Diagnosis Murder and Matlock and all of that too. So I, I mean I've those. I've always been a TV guy, film guy. I mean, look behind me. That's only just a fraction of my collection. But like you can't go wrong with any of those shows. Yeah, they had their formulas, but if there was a show that didn't have a formula, I want to say it was Briscoe. Because this is the first time outside of the <laughs> wild, wild west that a Western TV show ever interested me until like Deadwood came out like 30 years later. 
<laughs> completely different kind of western well, too because <laughs> it's, it's almost more of a sci-fi steampunk yeah, yeah. western yeah, yeah very 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 steampunk with the the orb kind of being mm-hmm. the yeah. the central oh, yeah. guffin oh i'm sorry it opens up with like rockets <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Rockets, zeppelins, all sorts of fun stuff. Fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> discovering viruses. Yeah. Wa- people washing their hands. Come on, Steve. They're way ahead of their time. <laughs> Human trafficking, all sorts of neat shit. <laughs> yeah. Baby kidnappings, you know, Irish mobs and Italian mafia. Like, hey, we were doing like freaking, what is it, Boardwalk Empire? Like, <laughs> 40 years early in the timeline and my personal favorite crazy ex-girlfriends hell yeah yeah. (laughs) well some really strong female characters throughout the whole series in fact that was a hallmark of the show yeah well and 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 you kind of notice that briscoe has a type because what? Like, yeah. like, like, like just, just re-watching the like we just rewatched the last uh the first 10 episodes like in the last three days preparing for this yeah. and it's like okay dixie cute blonde all right wavy blonde uh the professor's daughter in the first episode wavy all right blonde. wavy blonde all right yeah. goes back to his hometown where he meets his uh high school girlfriend Annie. and yeah Annie. it's like okay wavy blonde i, I get it I, I get it but there was brunettes and redheads too but he definitely had a thing for the blondes yeah <laughs> Also, this this show um, doesn't have a lot of strong female characters. No, I I thought I remembered the professor's daughter having more of a prominent role, but she did not at all. Yeah, yeah it's really no. like the first episode. I think she comes in like a couple towards the end. But I I, I, I was uh, reading like IMDb facts where it's like, oh, yeah, she was supposed to be a main thing. But then everybody loved Dixie so much that they just yeah. like oh. yeah, forget her. She was supposed to be the main love interest, and the chemistry between uh, Dixie and Briscoe was just way too strong and intense, and they just went with it. Yeah, it, it's a it's like, like I know I said earlier, comparing it to Maverick. Yeah, it's basically like Mel Gibson and Jodie Foster in that movie, and of course, oh, good you know James Garner and everybody in any series he's ever been in, just great energy. <laughs> that was a dope flick too. Yeah, yeah I yeah. I love that one. <laughs> it's a, I. I I feel like they made it because this le- got canceled, and they're like, "Well, we got all the sets. What if we get um, I, I don't know, true. Braveheart in here, and uh, he can yeah. be the new Briscoe?" <laughs> yeah, he wasn't too bad. But my my problem with that movie is they seem to like dawdle a little too much here and there. Like the pacing was out of whack on that. Like like even some of like the filler episodes in Briscoe were a bit tedious at times but none of them felt too bad until you got to like the last six episodes and then there was two of them in there that felt we really didn't need this we could have gone from 27 episodes down to 24 if it was a little (laughs) more focused because the last like basically seven episodes are like an epilogue to the actual main story that we grew accustomed to so when we don't have Bly around anymore or any of his gang anymore it feels like we're missing something. It kind of did like the eight team formula change of, oh, we're, we're these bandits. We're these criminals. You know, we're these mercenaries. Oh, now we work for the government the last two seasons. So we got to do what they tell us. To. Yeah, it, it seemed like they would completed their story and they're like, well, shit, we still have all this money left over. Yeah. <laughs> or if they knew that they were going to get sold to USA or TNT, whatever it was. And they're just like, film, film this extra shit. Because they actually had a pretty decent and concise story once Bly goes, yep. or with with Bly's ending, and yeah. unfortunately, I never got to see that as a kid. So, like today was fucking awesome for me. But uh, <laughs> their fillers were great. I, I I was just as happy with a filler episode as I was a plot driven episode up until about episode seventeen and eight or eighteen and nineteen. Once once the orb absorbs Bly, I like lost complete interest in all the filler shit. Even though all the fillers actually like were to set up the last seven episodes. All right. You know, it's they <laughs> oh, you're talking about like the hard rock episode in the Brooklyn Dodgers, eh? Yeah, it's like the, <laughs> the last seven episodes is just basically them writing what would later become Marvel's Secret Wars. Like, <laughs> 
if they're an unsanctioned, like, you know, Team X, like fucking Suicide Squad that gets sent to go do this horrible shit. <laughs> yeah, and if you get murdered for treason, you know, hey, sorry, tough luck. My yeah, bad. right. I'm the president, but uh, my hands are tied. Uh, <laughs> you know, anyway. I like the actor doing that, but what is it? Richard Hurd, I think was his it? name? The president at the end? Yeah. Yeah, he was he was excellent. I actually got a kick out of him trying to sample all the guns. Which is a total reference. We're going to do a callback to our Tremors episode with Bert Gummer and, and even <laughs> Steve, because, you know, we know Steve, we know you're listening, buddy, that, you know, you got to have fun with the guns. And he just kept going, no bigger, no bigger, no bigger. And then he pops off the bar, just cannon, and it just <laughs> shatters Socrates' poor hearing. And he's like, oh my God, what do I get into working for this guy? Yeah, I got to say, I love that artillery piece that they used to bust open the uh secret town with the knockout gas that's a total like rip off from bond but (laughs) oh the the giant rail gun or something yeah where they were shooting the knockout gas into the to the town to steal the orb oh yes there were a lot of those kind of things where there were like shout outs and winks like kind of not breaking the fourth wall but very self-aware yes there were a lot of puns you guys have any favorites well, there's the Led Zeppelin. I mean, that could be your sh- it could be your stairway to heaven. That's true. That that was pretty awesome. I wrote down a few of them. Uh, Annie, go get your gun. <laughs> I was, I was like, just yeah. thinking that one. <laughs> or Annie, get your gun. Oh, and thanks for the donut, Duncan. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the episode. I hit the sheriff, but I didn't hit the deputy. Yeah, like, <laughs> they had a bunch of great puns. They were really good. Now, there was an Ash versus Evil Dead callback. Um, they use it in the show where somebody just tells Briscoe, just don't think about it when confronted with a fight. And I kind of just, because we're very big Ash versus Evil Dead and Evil Dead fans over oh, here, yeah. that, that just struck me as like, I wonder if that's a callback to his Briscoe time, just for a little zing in there. And you would catch a little evil dead reference here or there but it was so subtle that unless you were really paying attention like i tried to pay attention to most of the episodes i had to watch them when i was doing other stuff but you know i I loved all the little callbacks and all the little easter eggs they had i mean the the one glaring one i didn't really dig was probably viva sheriff viva you know the elvis (laughs) knockoff (laughs) that was a bit stupid yeah. He grew on me, though. I wasn't, like, thrilled at first, but he grew on me. <laughs> uh, he was cool fucking with Pete. That was yeah. kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, oh, Pete. Pete. Love Pete. Oh. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> Pete's, you touched Pete's piece. Oh, my God, give me my piece. My God, he touched Pete's piece. Nobody touches Pete's piece. You're touching my piece. You know, <laughs> I love where it's like, didn't you die last episode? Obviously, that's completely irrelevant. Ninja stars <laughs> don't have the effect they used to on me. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like Pete repeats. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Guys, when are we going to talk about show enough? Am I the meanest? Show sure enough. Am I the prettiest? Show sure enough. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this time? Show sure sure enough. enough. Well, who am I? Sure enough. Who am I? Sure enough. I can't hear you. Sure enough. The baddest cat in the land. Sure enough. Lord Bola. Damn, he was so fucking awesome in this show. Right from word go, like, you know, oftentimes there's shows, you see like the cast is having a little trouble getting chemistry from, from the word go. And it maybe takes him a couple episodes. This one. He fit right in from the word go to the very end. Great relationship with Briscoe, but dude, show enough. Yeah. Loved seeing him and with his hair kind of tied back instead of all throw it out. Yeah. Right. I didn't realize until watching it this last time that it was show enough that was playing uh, Lord Bowler. I, I, I guess I just hadn't seen it in a couple of years or seen Last Dragon in, right. you know, 25, 30 years. But then I was like looking it up like, First thing known for, Last Dragon showing up. Holy shit, it is! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the baddest cat in the land? Show no enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've never even seen it, and when Jeff said that, I was like, wait, really? It's show enough? Co! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had no idea. And he's like, what? And I, I, did, I did a little gif in our chat between us all and threw it up, and he just 
He sent me like this reaction of what? Uh, I, <laughs> he, he probably I never seen name. Last Dragon, but he saw the Buster Rhymes music video. So yeah. <laughs> no, I just I just I knew it by reputation. Uh, I, I I knew yeah. his character's name by reputation. Nice. So I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. But yeah, I mean, like if if you look up like angry black man. In, in the dictionary it's lord it's lord boulder it is lord boulder like he is he for the nicest he is he's angry about everything and you're just like damn boulder simmer simmer baller. the only thing that makes him happy is when he's getting paid it's Fuck baller yes. like the hat oh regardless but he's got a mortgage to make so he needs to get paid for that sweet those sweet digs and his butler those are some nice <laughs> digs and watch out for the crystal and his pistachios though oh the poor crystal I, I felt for the guy. I really did. Oh, Having like a great collection. His girlfriend and... shop. Oh my god, that girlfriend. <laughs> hey, Kevin said crazy ex-girlfriends. That one would fit the bill. There's a few of them in here. Well, and he even tried to go to the government and be like, I'm getting stalked by an ex-girlfriend. I'm like, boy, some things just always age the same. <laughs> they can't really say like they don't age well because a lot of like the themes and some of the characters and even caricatures like not all of them like age poorly some of them do unfortunately now what did you guys think of like the the music during this show i mean yeah it's the, granted <laughs> it's the main theme of course which ended up being used in the olympics but exactly. you know did, did that grab any of you or was it just a good time with the show i, I thought it was music. exciting yeah I it's, it's, it. a, it's a dang good theme it gets you you know gets the action going like usually comes in full orchestra coming in like when he's like riding a horse or chasing something Ooh. but then i don't know it's like a quieter scene like you know it has the the slowed down version and all that you can still kind of tell but yeah you know, overall, right. i think the score is pretty good especially for a tv show yeah and for yeah. the funding that i'm sure that they didn't have yeah until they got <laughs> the licensing rights for the theme song for the olympics and then somebody made some bank on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it was a uh, was it randy edelman or whatever did the i, I think so I'm trying to remember the opening credits now yeah. <laughs> one name I, I noticed was felix alcala who's done a lot of different tv shows including brimstone which we were talking about before our episode here yeah a couple of like like we've been watching <laughs> we've been binging supernatural because we oh. lack self-respect uh but like daniel adias like, like, like with captain power and soldiers of the future there was a couple directors were like their names of poppy like oh yeah he did like four episodes of that or you know oh, yeah it pops up on supernatural all the time and uh but what one director i didn't see on here was sam raimi and i thought that was weird you know being a uh, bruce campbell joint but then i realized oh wait he was doing quick in the dead around this time another western <laughs> that's yeah, uh, I, I oh. was gonna say i thought he was doing that around now or just after briscoe yeah just I, I think it came out in 95 so yeah probably would have been right after this or but, during uh, the last shooting of the second half yeah what That's year did this come out movie what year did this come out 93 uh, 94 yeah yeah how i remember that is beyond me because i didn't actually look that up <laughs> good show keeps your memories there's there really weren't any other types of shows exactly like this at all at the time oh this was unique and yeah. I don't, I don't think that there ever was ever after that. No, no. I mean, this no. TV, this TV show was basically set up as a radio serial. Yeah. Uh, you know, each, each individual segment was a different serial because it always ends on a cliffhanger and then comes back and says chapter two, chapter three, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like an old Superman serial where you come back the next week and they magically get out of whatever fucking problem they, they had. Well, and they included that in the show with the dime store novels of Briscoe's yeah. adventures. That was yeah. fun uh, as a running yeah. gag. Yeah, and then and you think about all the the uh, uh, westerns that have come out since then that have like ripped that off. You know, like uh, well, no, Un Unforgiven came out first, but yeah, 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 yeah. It was just before that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shit, what show was I just thinking of? Edward. Oh, Shanghai Noon. Oh. Oh, oh well, that yeah, was later. Yeah. Or no, Shanghai Nights, where he's he's writing all these horrible like stories about himself in dime novels. Oh, yeah. Under a different <laughs> pseudonym. Right. Then you get his real name and you're like, really? Roy. John, John Wayne? 
No, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible name for a cowboy. It's a horrible name for a person. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> jokes on him. He died of cancer. <laughs> and his name was Marianne Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> Butt cancer to boot. But anyway. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> Which he got here in our home state of Utah. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers to the conqueror. <laughs> you know, he was actually afraid of horses. Like anytime really? you'd see him in a movie where he's like sitting on the horse, like in the old cavalry type shit. And he's doing his whole famous, yeah, he's sitting on a fake horse because he was afraid of them. He got bucked early on in his career and it scared the shit out of him. He never got up on another one ever again. As somebody who's been bucked off a horse, it is scary as shit. I don't yeah. blame him. No, Fair thank enough. you. But Not the trick is Christ you can't let the horse get away from away with it. You have to get right back on him and That's make right. him do what you were trying to make him do. We're trying to get him. Not all of them can be common. Oh, Comet. Oh, com- yeah, let, com- let's talk Comet. Comet gets like third billing or something. Com- Comet's amazing. <laughs> Comet's yeah. Also, he- I think low-key Comet wants Briscoe to get killed. Because, like, he doesn't actually, like, do a whole heck of a lot to save him in a lot of the scenarios. He's like, you moron, you got yourself into this. He's <laughs> kind of like Vampire Hunter D's hand. Like, he's there, he helps because he has to. But he's going to fuck with, uh, you know, Briscoe the entire time. He's the, you're saying he's the whistler of the show? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm sorry, Blade. I can only help from the sidelines. <laughs> I got no the drums. <laughs> oh, the is near. I have to go. That's right. Chris Christopherson is the voice of Comet. <laughs> Peckerhead. <laughs> uh, Comet. I love Comet. Very you know, hard to relate to like an animal in any sort of show of any sort. I mean, you can't have like a somebody's actually, like, never talking. seen Jurassic Park. I've seen Jurassic Park. <laughs> you didn't relate to the T Rex, or is it because she's a strong female? Oh. <laughs> oh. I was gonna say I related to the the killing of other people, but that's about it. <laughs> Careful, Jeff, you're gonna miss your bus. Is that what ran over me? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, th- it can happen with movies. It just depends on what you relate best to. But like, as far as like a lovable creature that, you know, is like a faithful companion, well, quote unquote, faithful companion. <laughs> I grew attached to Comet you know, as part of the show. Like without Comet, it's like, yeah, you're not really missing any story elements, but you know, you have a companion along for the ride that's not always Bowler because he's not in every episode. You don't have Socrates in every episode. What's the one consistent through almost every episode outside of Briscoe? And he, that's Comet. And he, he's great for dumping exposition when there's nobody else around on the high planes. Exactly. Yeah, so how did you figure out this track? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're yeah, pawing the ground. Okay. Oh, so it was two bears and you can track as well as Boulder. Okay. Right. Bowler. <laughs> horses do that. Is uh, Comet the horse's real name? I take it from him being yeah, in the credits. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And apparently it's the only thing he starred in. <laughs> he, he was one and done. Which is a shame because <laughs> he's very talented. Yeah. And I was also just realizing, wait, didn't Maverick talk to his horse too? In a yeah. couple? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I, I see you, I see you, Richard Donner. I see you. But <laughs> Maverick's horse didn't talk back to Brett, so Oh, <laughs> well, or Bert, excuse me, whatever. Right. Um, it's high right. level conversations were not, but his, his dad always calls him Bert <laughs> just, just to fuck with them. All right, Bert. But anyway, <laughs> just lost my thoughts. I was thinking of James Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> it's very common. We, we've all, we've all been there. Era. God damn yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, as far as them ripping off this show, a bunch of shows and movies rip this off. Fuck. Okay. If you look at each fucking uh, episode, there are like plot synopsises to each level of Red Dead Redemption, like one through two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everything from the snake oil merchants, the fucking races, all sorts of shit. <laughs> and look, I, I'm sure if we go back and watch like, you know, Rawhide and uh, Ponderosa, or all, all those shows from 50s and 60s, there's a lot of similar plots. But yeah, yeah, it's it is what it is. But <laughs> I, I'm just saying it came out like the following year and it was like. <laughs> Oh yeah, we got this uh, <laughs> this show. It was actually pretty good. Oh, it got canceled. So no one's using those sets, huh? All right. 
<laughs> Speaking of the sets, did they use some of the sets from uh, Blazing Saddles? Well, it was the NBC lot it was on. Or yeah, yeah I, think it was, I think it was the same lot. So, yeah, it was probably, yeah. I mean, it would have been, what, 15 years or so after Blazing Saddles? I think yeah, so. Yeah, because there's a bar that they constantly walk past, and it's the yeah, same so. bar in several different uh, towns. It's a white building with red trim, yeah. and it's a replica of, of a building where I grew up in San Juan Batista. Right. And so it's like every time I see that, I'm like, oh, did they film back home? Oh, no, no. It's just like I always thought it was like the Warner backlot or something like that. And and it looks very similar. Like I tried to watch Blazing Saddles immediately after, but didn't get a chance into that. And they paint those fucking things every other film. The sets. Yeah. 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 The, all, all the towns kind of look the same because yeah, I think it is like the same lot just shot from different angles or whatever. Because it's like, well, we're here in, you know, Gillette, Wyoming or something like that. Like, are you really? Or. <laughs> This looks a lot like your old hometown, Briscoe. I'm just going to throw that out there. No, no, no. <laughs> See, this one's grayer. That one's slightly browner. That we, one's a slightly we, darker we, black. We use a different filter on this one. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> and this desk is in a different location from the prison cell. So this is a different sheriff station from the other nine you've seen for oh, the last nine episodes we, in a row. Yeah. We, we just watched the one where uh, like his buddy was on trial or whatever, but they had the, oh, God, the, yeah. the trial in the bar. And I'm like, oh, so they didn't have a, 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 a courtroom set. Nice. Okay, well, I'll buy it. That was an interesting <laughs> way to tackle that was like, oh, no, that, the courthouse is kind of a, a, in construction zone. And, uh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're going to do this here. And when, we're, when we recess, we're all going to drink. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's what I call a court case. Oh, <laughs> hey, the, was it one of the... Uh... One of the witnesses had a had a shot before coming up to the uh, coming up to the <laughs> <Yeah. stand. laughs> That was a fun episode because you actually saw Briscoe do what he went to college for for even just a brief moment. It's not like this throwaway idea of oh he went to Harvard for being an attorney and it's just talked about oh he went to Harvard he went to Harvard. He actually did something with it other than it just being a throwaway. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's not just a, a bounty hunter avenging his father and it's like oh that's right he was a lawyer for i, I don't know two semesters <laughs> this isn't just a knockoff of d south <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and he couldn't even defend himself at the treasonous last two episodes where he's like i'm being defended by somebody who's never even defended a case oh we're screwed a oh, military so public Socrates. defender yeah who also has never handled a com- criminal case. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate. And Socrates being uh, That's not true. Inept. Socrates helped uh, help Briscoe handle that one. So Socrates has helped with one criminal case. And this he won. So he's got a 100% yeah. record on his ass. Right. Better than She-Hulk. <laughs> Better win rate. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but does, <laughs> does Socrates twerk? <laughs> Well, ask ask his uh, crazy ex girlfriend. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> or his sister April O'Neil. Right. Oh, oh, speaking of not strong female <laughs> characters, uh, I'll give you that one. Yeah, uh, that was, that was a one. really disappointing episode. And I I love Miss Hogue so much. She's awesome. You're right. Yeah. Like did. she's done <laughs> so much neat shit for the uh, like the 30th anniversary of Ninja Turtles lately. And so it's like I got super excited when I saw her. Yeah. And then the writing wasn't as good as I would have expected for it to be. I don't think it gelled quite thoroughly at that time. They didn't really have a grip on where they were going and what they were doing. They had probably the outline, but they hadn't smoothed out the kinks by that point. Because that's what, like not even eight episodes yeah, like in and they were doing that? Four episodes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although they aired episodes out of order on the DVD, I noticed. Oh, did they? Uh, yeah. Socrates' sister is supposed to be the fifth episode. It actually aired second for me when I was watching. I'm like, oh. none of this makes sense. And then Pete shows up in episode five. I'm like, isn't he supposed to be like dead? Yeah. He's been dead for a few. Haven't he? Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Tales from my perforation. <laughs> I've been perforated as one of the funniest guys. Oh my god, that was freaking fantastic. <laughs> that, that's during the, the last episodes. I believe I've been perforated. <laughs> oh no, Will's turned into a cat. Uh, the best version of Will. <laughs> uh, he's probably off doing something. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> now, okay, I'm going to ask uh, one last question storyline wise for this. Now, what did you think of the correlationship with Dixie and Briscoe? Do you think that was a worthy 
end for them. I mean, they kind of played cat and mouse the whole show and it never really was resolved. And now for going into a second season, Carlton Cuse a couple of years ago, it did say like, if we had gotten a second season, Briscoe would have been a sheriff in a small town and married to Dixie. Ooh, now, Dixie with, County? Yep. It was <laughs> be Dixie County. They were going to have a couple of kids and dealing with the ramifications of being a sheriff in a small town. But to the core question, do you think that was a good good direction? And what did you think of the overall story between the two? Uh, Briscoe was doing fine as a bachelor. I'd have kept it that way. That seemed to be his thing. Well, only suckers get married. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the one who asked. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if my wife was out, she'd do the same thing. <laughs> He's like, well, you're the idiot who asked me. Uh, well, I would have is- been like, well, you're the one who said yes. So. The, you see, the thing is with him. I the, believe my answer was, "Are you shitting me?" <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, I, I think the, the thing is, like a se- second season, if he's just a small town sheriff or whatever, then it really, it really limits like what can happen because yeah. you know, like, oh, we, we got another uh, band of I don't know, banditos coming through and causing ruckus and blah blah blah, and the next week it's. I don't know. It seemed, it seemed like where he was like the bounty hunter, just going wherever the money's at. Like you could, I don't know, th- throw in just something different. Like, oh yeah, there's a there's a tank rolling through town. We gotta take it out before it takes out the next town. But that w- that was part of uh part of the the Bly gang. Yeah, well, yeah but, but 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 yeah, but you kind of need like another Bly gang or like another big overlapping thing. Whereas like with, with small town, it's just like, oh shoot. Um, I don't know. O- old lady Mabel's cattle are at, is out again and causing a ruckus. And we got to save a kid from, I don't know, trapped himself on top of the water tower. I, I don't know. It just doesn't. So seem... Lord, Lord Bowler, Timmy's not a well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that that gets County. into like territory of like TV shows, like tremors, Eureka, defiance. You got all these shows centered around literally a little town and all the craziness that happens in it. And, I don't think this show was meant to go in that direction. It's probably good that this ended when it did, because it probably would have been such a different show in the second season. I think it might have lost more viewers and not really gone well. Would have become uh, the the forerunner for next door. (laughs) (laughs) Is that maybe why they didn't get a second season? Because the studio didn't like where they wanted to go with it? No, it was ratings. Uh Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, No, it was legit. It wasn't watched at all. Well, it started off great, but then it just nosedived after like three or four episodes. But uh, it, it had enough ratings going that they, you know, allowed them to like finish, finish the, season. the season. But when they got to the last half of the season, it they were just like, wow, did, we're just going to write this out then. Did they do the Fox thing where they change it to like Saturday mid-afternoons and then back to like Wednesday <laughs> evenings and stuff like that? Because I know they've done that to dozens just about and every dozens show. of series. No, they didn't do that. Not to me anyway, from when I was watching it, it stayed the same. It was still Fridays because like it was paired up with because it was paired up with the X Files. I I at least as far as my memory goes, it was paired up the same. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, I just know that happened to a lot of shows. So it was like maybe oh, that yeah. was why people dropped off, or or maybe if it was paired with X Files, was it like during the season where uh Mulder wasn't around and it was uh oh God, right? cry check or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. God, they did that to Space Above and Beyond, and it's like, okay, you were on Friday, now you moved it to Sunday. What the hell are you doing? And nobody was watching on Sunday, so of course it got canceled. Yeah. Well, you know, like you know, the famous one, Firefly, kind of the same thing, where oh, it was God. like after like four episodes, it was like, Well, what when is it? Doesn't matter, it's canceled. <laughs> yeah we're three episodes in and we didn't even show you the pilot so screw y'all it's gone good luck yeah was this yeah. your first experience with fox killing a beloved series jeff yeah for me it's this is when uh yeah. the heartbreak of oh shows get canceled after one season okay i mean i'd probably you know i grew up on in battlestar galactica era but i saw it in syndication i didn't see it when it aired because i'd only just been born but I only knew of that show just being one season. Nowadays, we're kind of accustomed to shows just being like, if it's one season, maybe it's a limited series. Or maybe yeah. that's the only story they had to tell. Because they'll give shows that window of, oh, we'll give you 10 to 13 episodes. No show these days gets a full order for 24 episodes unless you're like ER and George Clooney wants back. 
Yeah. Yeah. The only, I, I, like I'm trying to think of like shows before this where it was like I was disappointed after one season. And aside from Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future, the only other thing I can think of is like the Critic, which is right around the same time. But even then, I think that was technically yeah. two seasons, even though it's like 20 episodes. First episode ABC or first season ABC. Then I went to Fox for Fox, the second yeah. season. Yeah. I think I remember other shows around this time, but I don't think there was like VR5. Oh, yeah. There was another show that was on Fox, too. There was a TV show called Profit that was on that only ran like five episodes, and that was canceled. Uh, for, Forever Night? Forever. Well, that ran three seasons. Oh, did it? Yeah, first season CBS, then it got into syndication, and somebody helped fund the rest. Oh, then it okay. ended up on USA Channel for like 15 years in syndication. Yeah, yeah. Say, so, well, that like a Canadian show or something? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that was uh, shot in Toronto. Yeah. That's a good show. I mean, I want to say uh, my first experience of Fox canceling a beloved show was War of the Worlds, but... <laughs> <laughs> you do not need to keep bringing that up. Stop it. Yeah. Hindsight... <laughs> This is probably the first example. <laughs> Wait, was Freddy's Nightmares before this? No. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. Freddy the that 13th was what, the series. Yeah, that was like 88, 89, something like that. Oh, I yeah. loved those. Yeah. Well, those two. No, yeah. I, I love Friday the 13th. Freddy's Nightmares was good for the host segments. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, there, there, there are no Tales from the Crypt, but they're... They're all right. Ooh, I love. Didn't that they show. try to reboot Twilight Zone around the late nineties too? Uh Probably. no, it was. And they did the Tales from the Dark Side. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tales from the Dark Side too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They tr- uh, Twilight Zone's revival or first revival was in the early eighties, wasn't it? Oh, that's... where they had the color episodes. Yeah, right I after think. the movie. Yeah, I think yeah. it was around the movie time. Yeah, that's oh. right. And if anything. Yeah, because the movie was all reenactments of original episodes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. That's right. That's right. Now, guys, do we have any other thoughts about Briscoe? If we were to reboot it, who would you cast in it? Briscoe. Bruce, or Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Still Bruce Campbell? Or is Bruce Campbell uh, Briscoe County Senior now? Uh, that Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Now and he could <laughs> rock his normal do, which is the silver hair and yeah. the silver beard. I think it would... I mean, he's even on record saying he'd this is the one one of the few shows and projects he'd ever come back to do a new uh, project on. Well, because besides this or Ash, like what else has he starred in? Bubba Hotep? Like everything else he's kind of like Burn Notice or whatever. He's kind of second fiddle. And yeah, I mean, Jack of all trades. But like, I don't think he really wants to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or Xena or Hercules, but nobody wants to see Sorbo anymore. But I'll take more of Lucy Law. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> yes. He's going to come back for the Congo prequel. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually has a starring role. <laughs> but J- Joe Don Baker looks older than before. <laughs> <laughs> Batter, too. Oh, now, Kevin, who would you uh, cast? I don't even know. Like, I, is, is there anybody currently that like just has that Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds would be the only person that I could think of that has that personality where yeah he could play very straight, but then still be funny at the same time. See, I was thinking, uh, I, I, I watched justified and like Timothy Oliphant Ooh. could do that pretty well too. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Like, like, that's just like a grittier brisk modern day Briscoe County in a lot of ways, but, but yeah, oh. I don't know. Wasn't he in, um, was it Deadwood or Hell or... Oh, yeah, he was in Deadwood. Yeah. or It was one of those two. I've only seen a few episodes of Deadwood, but... Yeah, me too. I think he was in that, though. Yeah. He was for, like, part of it. And then, of course, obviously, Lord Bowler has to be played by Terry Crews. Oh, I like that. (laughs) No, actually, that's a really good call. (laughs) That would be doper than hell. (laughs) <laughs> no, that's a duo right there and the, and, and the reason i say that is because packs. because i'm thinking last dragon who else could play show enough nowadays and it's like oh yeah terry cruz he's got it well they rebooted that too <laughs> that'd be all right too terry cruz could play anything and i'd be just as happy with anything it. he, he could, damn well wants to play yeah he could be briscoe county i'm now that'd be cool <laughs> no they if they wanted to reboot this i i would be total game for you know as long as you had maintained like the spirit i'm of the opinion you can reboot like whatever because you can't take away the originals 
it just brings yeah. more eyeballs to the original if anything because you know if it's long enough and you haven't rebooted it like nine times star trek <clears throat> <laughs> then um you can oh you know it brings more attention back to the original briscoe and then hey all of a sudden you got tv and syndication rights again oh here's another check in the mail for everybody on briscoe oh, guys i got it it's the adventures of briscoe county the third <gasps> yep and I mean, I, I'm trying to remember like what year this takes place, but I'm thinking like 30 years later or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, is that World War One or like maybe these uh this these these this certain German group coming to power what? in the twenties and thirties? Eighteen ninety four is what this was set in. Eighteen ninety four. So okay, so yeah, thirty years later, are you at nineteen twenty four? Just yeah. after World War One. At least you got the roar in twenties you can play around with. There's a mm-hmm. oh yeah, things going on around. Stock market there. crash. Yeah, absinthe. Yeah, Very depressing. babe, I got it. We got a um, Terry Crews as Briscoe, and then for <laughs> Lord Bowler we get Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, oh, there we go. So he's he's like, like, no, angry the entire time. Or is he Socrates? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I think he should be Lord Bowler. I want to see him come in and be angry and sassy. Okay. Socrates <laughs> should be Patton Oswalt. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Or um, uh, oh shit, Stanley Tucci, Paul F. Tompkins. No, oh, Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> hey, Will, you got any ideas about casting if they did a reboot? Well, I was wondering about the guy from Witcher and Superman because he seems oh, like Henry he Cavill? could. Yeah, yeah, he seems like he could do a kind of. Oh, yeah. I don't know with his. I'm sorry, you the mean Witcher. the guy from Hellraiser Six? <laughs> Yeah. Well, Hell, Hellraiser Hell World from Terry Cavill. Wait, really? Ew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Baby, baby, baby. Henry Cavill gets spoiler alert killed by Lance Hendrickson. Oh well oh, then. <laughs> Is that why I didn't watch anything after five? God damn. <laughs> I never made it past that. four. Oh, four oh, the, is that the Craig Sheffer one? <laughs> that's the space. No, one. that's like that's like nine. That's like seven, seven, eight, or nine. Oh. Nine's where they go to TJ, I think. I think that's where they had the new pinhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revelations or yeah, whatever. Are you guys excited for uh, this weekend with the new Hellraiser coming out? Oh, yeah. They're finally going to go to space. I'm <laughs> excited to see people <laughs> lose didn't their shit. Did they? No. <laughs> what's that, Kevin? I said, I'm excited to see people lose their shit this weekend is what I'm ready for. Yeah. Like, know, I'm hearing like it's really good, actually. So I'm I'm excited to check it out. Like, I've met Clive Barker twice, and I'm not nearly as bad as these fucking online purists. They're like, oh, it's uh, going to suck. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. Uh, what I've uh, learned about every fandom, I've learned from both Jurassic Park and Star Wars. Yeah. People who claim to be true fans, like one and a half of the movies. Yes. Or like in the <laughs> case of pieces. Clive Barker fans have never read the books. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. He made movies. Why do I need to read books? Right? Hashtag Nightbreed. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got a request for that the other day, actually. Yes, we did. It's a fabulous movie. That was fantastic, yeah. And Depending it's on, on which movie, version you're talking about. All of that. Uh, you can't ruin I think that we've only seen the director's Well, the theatrical cut is very lacking, but the director's yeah. cut is phenomenal. Yeah, I, I think we've only seen the director's cut as well. It's, it, it suffers from the uh, Highlander 2 problem where... Oh, uh, God, yeah. <laughs> they just, like, I remember that was one of the first movies I remember watching as a kid and being like, wait, I thought this was Highlander. Did, did we get the wrong VHS? Yeah. What, what's this about aliens and shit? So Highlander yeah. 2 is one of the movies that convinced me there were, like, Ripoffs of movies, and again, this starring is starring the same to, people. Yes, but this is back to uh, like on our hacked cable on pay per view. Whenever I saw Ghostbusters, the description would just said three scientists catch ghosts, and I was like, oh, that must be a ripoff of the real Ghostbusters because the real Ghostbusters has four. Is or it could be scientist? the movie on Netflix called Spectral? <laughs> oh, the James Bond movie. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember, uh, blonde Mexican tries to kill an old lady. <laughs> no, I, I heard the three scientists busting ghosts, and I just reminded me of the the movie on Netflix from a few years ago called Spectral. It's actually pretty interesting, just very long. Yeah, that they was need fun. to cut out like fifteen minutes of that movie. Oh, if that's all, is there a lot of? <laughs> Are there driving scenes, parking scenes, what stairways? <laughs> yeah. Look, how are we going to know how they got there if we don't see the parking scenes? It's a it's bird demic amount of parking. <laughs> right? You can't just have parking. You have to have them getting in and out of the cars. Mm-hmm. And going and up flights of stairs. Spot? Just like the Tangler. Yeah. You don't okay, know if they're going to make it all the way through the door or up the stairs to the door unless you actually see. 
Well, we're yeah. stupid. You see, they're pandering to us, but well, because we're stupid, we don't really acknowledge it. Well, why worry? We're all wearing unlicensed nuclear particle accelerators on our back. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you put it like that. Kevin, <laughs> do we have some social media? Dude, we've got a bunch of social media. Well, let's get to it. Like, people love Briscoe County Jr. Oh, let's see here. First, we'll, we'll get on to Facebook, because we actually had Twitter account or Twitter comments this time. Pretty excited. Jessica Johnson said, none of my memories or feelings on this show are appropriate for mixed company. <laughs> and it goes hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote hubba drip, hubba. Drip. Oh, that was you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be me messing with Jessica, but yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Somebody get that lady a mop. <laughs> and a cold shower. <laughs> we have Charlie Esser who says, Jul- Julius Carey's Lord Bowler and John Aston's Professor Wickwire just made this show for me. Bruce is great, but his supporting cast really highlights the world that they inhabit. I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. They had great yes, chemistry, yes, yes. like we said. Just really phenomenal chemistry. They did. I mean, just even beyond the two of them, most everybody that was returning character worked well together, like, especially John Aston. I mean, I mean, he can't not work well because he's a fucking genius. But oh, yeah. this this whole series, the cast was like lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. It worked really well. <clears throat> just pieces meshing. Yeah. Like, like a gearbox. Yes, very much so. In the Zeppelin, probably. Yeah, I'm thinking the Zeppelin with the gearbox. (laughs) Led Zeppelins. It's your stairway to heaven. By Hindenburg. (laughs) By Von Hindenburg. (laughs) He just wants it named after him. Just one. With armaments. Yep, with armaments. Zeppelin, (laughs) not Hindenburg. (laughs) Should have gotten us all helium so we could then do that effect right now. Oh, Uh, the humanity. (laughs) Uh, spoiler alert, guys! The in real life, the world is actually running out of helium. We'll be out of helium in another thirty years unless we find another cave full of it. Oh no! Yeah, we've been <laughs> wasting it on party balloons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Once again, kids destroying the future. I yes. Guess, right? Well, they I'm... went back to the future. Oh, another pun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Next, we've got John Eckert, who says, another greatly underappreciated series. It's in our queue for a rewatch. Yep, get on that. Yeah, you guys are going to have a great time. I I don't know how long it's been since you guys have seen it, but I promise you're going to have a great time. If you don't, blame Jeff. Yep, I say we've been binging it for the last couple days, and it's like, all right, I guess we got another uh, week or so to get through this. (laughs) Sorry, Supernatural. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Sam and Dean can wait they got another 14 oh, seasons to help you through <laughs> my god can they wait no no see we've been binging it for god a fucking year now oh, and wow. we're like halfway through year. season 13 and oh, you're, I, you're, I, I, I was questioning after season 3 like do we really want to do this do <laughs> you mean about when you we both tapped out the first time yeah <laughs> I always had the same problem with that show but I made it through season 5 because Eric Kripke intended to end it there it's everything after that was not really planned out exactly because he wanted to go off and do something else. So we had that season five ending is the original ending for the show. Uh, that 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 makes sense. That checks but out. Then again, we did just see one of the funnier episodes. Yeah, just we the saw other one, day. Yeah, we saw the, the, uh, the Scooby Doo one. The yeah, crossover yeah. they did. Scooby Doo is a great one. <laughs> that was the middle of season thirteen though, and it was like, oh, when was the last good one? Season eight, maybe? <laughs> yeah, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so season six was really rough i was oh, ready yeah. to give it up but then somebody told me at least watch through season seven and season seven gave me enough hope to keep going through here <laughs> it's a lot of hope it, yeah yeah it's uh there, there's a lot of bms boy moments <laughs> uh, <laughs> at first i was like yay that sounds cool <laughs> <laughs> never mind all right, let's see. Next, we've got Elliot Wong. 
Like it says, I just didn't like how the time travel stuff didn't quite line up. But hey, it's TV. And it was pretty darn entertaining TV at that. But I like Firefly that came after. It was, or sorry, but like Firefly that came after, it wasn't long for this world. But at least Firefly had a movie. It's been a while since I watched this show, but John Aston remains a favorite ever since he was Gomez Adams. And he's still alive, apparently. Oh, wow. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah, like we said, like there's nothing that John Aston can do that is a bad performance. I, I don't know that if we're actually going to cover it this month, but just to talk about it, Mr. Boogity that's on fucking uh, uh, what, Disney Plus. Oh, yeah. He's he's in that, and it's a stupid ass movie, but he's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it was always the Frighteners. Yeah, oh, oh, I love the Frighteners. That's a dope flick. Dope flick. Yeah. Peter oh, Jackson, baby. Yeah, I don't want to do that one. By the but way, think- side note, Firefly is complete and utter rip off of out- the anime Outlaw Star. They just replaced the kid with the prostitute, and I'm still mad about it. <laughs> uh, you're not the only one who said that when that came out. I said that, too. You watch, the you, pilots, you watch the two pilots, it's like, holy shit, something got ripped off here. Yep. Oh, I, I have mentioned that to quite a few nerds, and I think ruined their lives. <laughs> yeah, At least made their tattoos like... be, seem more insignificant. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife when is the anime came George. out, and it actually came out way before Firefly by like three or four years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have kids, so I'll take the prostitute. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's an improvement. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. A lot more interesting, a lot more they can do, a lot more storyline yeah. possibilities. What, what what more things can they do? They <laughs> <laughs> specifically can't do a each prostitute? Other? Well, a prostitute <laughs> has a lot of talents outside of just being a person. Well, you know, singing and dancing like too. Dixie, but no. <laughs> well, we're R-rated, oh, but yeah. we're not NC-17 there, Well, Dixie is just a very well-written, uh, like, Western cat woman. <laughs> That's who Dixie is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, she's very Catwoman esque, and I love that she only has one song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it makes me happy every time. <laughs> yeah. Did they write it, or is it in the public domain? Because <laughs> <I'm> not sure. <laughs> yeah. What was that band that you took your friend to go see, where the concert was only forty five minutes long, and they only had one oh, song? Oh, Gautier. Yeah. <laughs> she's the Gautier of her time. Yeah. <laughs> that guy wow. apparently that's the only song he knows how to play <laughs> and then the rest was basically like keeping the bass line and then just being a dj and then it was like all right have a good night everybody like you you've been up there for 42 minutes but oh, fuck you <laughs> are there any requests play that same song <laughs> you got it. if that's what the people want just gotta hit that air horn <laughs> I love my fans. Love the fans. What can I say? Anything for you guys. <laughs> so coming back to that thought about a movie, do you think maybe a movie would be a better way to do this? A sequel? I don't think yeah. they green light that kind of budget. Yeah. The problem is if you if you make it a movie, you can't say adventures of Briscoe County Jr. because that's what made the filler episodes but, feel not so fillery. They'll just it's go just, the Rambo yeah. route and call it Briscoe County Jr. Yeah. No, it, it's the, the adventure of Briscoe County the third. Another adventure of Briscoe County it's, Jr. It's the one of the grandson, you know. <laughs> yeah. They're still going the Briscoe County Juniors or the third juniors, whichever they are. Oh shit. They just do it like they did the uh those uh, CMT Smokey and the Bandit sequels. Oh called, my like, God. Brisco, 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 and Brisco uh, Goes Country, and uh, Run, Brisco, Run. Faster, like <laughs> Brisco, Kill, Kill, or something. I'm going to eat that apple. No red apples. No red apples. All right. Next, we've got Rhonda Fisher, who said, I love Brisco County Jr. I get so excited every Olympics when they play the theme song. Yeah. Damn Skippy. Oh, yeah. Damn Skippy. That was back when Mark Henry was still lifting, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, see, Judas Machina said, I love this show. Burke Cashin says, I used to love watching this show. Well, get to rewatching then. What are you waiting for, Brooke? It's on Tubi. No excuses. 
I know she used to like watching it because she watched it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Brooke. And our friend Jen, Jen Peter says, I remember how excited I was when the series came out on DVD. I had met Bruce and the actor who played Bowler at SDCC the previous weekend and was really she riding was? that high. So, yeah, let's talk about that for a second. When this uh, box set came out, it was fucking expensive for its time. I still have the original set. Yeah. Same here. I bought it, I think, when it was still like 70, 80 bucks, whatever it was. Oh, yeah. Like That was yeah. a lot back then, too. Yes, very much so, because I want to say... Inflation, you did... that's like 300 bucks today. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a Blu-ray? For a Blu-ray 4K series edition? Yeah. Maybe. Well, the Game of Thrones, put in perspective, the complete series set for that just got as low as like a hundred, but the normal price is like a hundred and seventy-five. And okay. I looked up the price for what I paid for this set because I've kept records for years. I paid sixty-nine ninety-nine. <laughs> yeah, now I nice. think it's they had it like <laughs> condensed in a much smaller package for like twenty, and you're like. Fuck. <laughs> Actually, it's a little more priced around $40 unless you want it used. Now, stay tuned to the end of our episode. We are doing a giveaway for the DVD box set. Oh, that, shit. That you can't really, unless you want to spend 40 bucks, we're going to be giving one away at the end. Hell yeah. Who, who doesn't want free Bruce Campbell? Hell yeah. Okay. Next, we've got Doug Martin, who said it was a great show. It was very clever. It was, just like we said, this show did things that other TV shows never did and that radio shows did forever and perfected very well. Well, I guess they did this at the movies. Would would serials be considered TV episodes or movies? Mm. Does it Mm. depend upon the show? All their serials were broken up into sections, so they wouldn't, although they were featured at theaters. Uh, That's a good question. See, Eric Webster says, I've got to check this out one day. Yes, you should check it out today. It is so worth your time. It's very much worth your time. Uh, like I, I was, like Jeff said, I was a big X Files fan throughout the '90s. Like that was definitely my jam. But looking back in hindsight, this show I think remains better than X Files does as far as holding up. I think so. It's, yeah, it's still definitely. fun. There's nothing you roll your eyes at. Uh, Too bad. Like, Dixie doesn't have an alien baby. Yeah, exactly. They don't yeah. name it. Well, I guess they would have named it after Briscoe's dad, wouldn't they? Anyway. Briscoe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's the adventures of Briscoe County the third. He's a space cowboy and it's a Firefly reboot. I want to be a space cowboy. cowboy. Exactly. Yeah. See, the orb came back in time again, and then it took him into the future. <laughs> Can I just say one more thing about this as far as lazy writing on the comics part? Bly is apparently reverse Flash. Like, he's come back to fuck with Briscoe and get this orb so he could rule the future. Like, that's that's just Eobard Thon. That's all that is. Yeah. But Billy Drago is one of the scariest motherfuckers that's ever been on TV or the silver screen, so. Great villain. Oh, shit. Show. Who do we get to play him in the reboot? Oh. Or, or I guess him just coming back again through time or something. I don't know. Maybe or uh, somebody that's already been scary on TV that's ordinarily not say like fucking zachary kinto like people love him as as spock but remember for you know a few months he was like the scariest dude on tv for a while yeah okay Mm -hmm. and (laughs) oh hey Uh, (laughs) no now you're talking (laughs) and then steve martin steve says have the steve martin yes of course I mean, I'm the Kevin Smith. He's the that's Steve what I've Martin. heard. He's the Steve Martin. So, like, yes. Before weight loss. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm gaining mine. Listen, to it. <laughs> Steve says I have the series on DVD. So sad. Uh, back in the day, watching it, that it didn't at least get a conclusion. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. it, that's true. Ordinarily, that's true. Especially when when they get the axe like in the middle and they don't know th- that they're going to be getting it. But this show, I think they could have just capped it off at the 20 episodes. Like, it didn't didn't need to have further adventures, per se, in an epilogue. Like, once he got Bly and did his destiny, like, to me, that was just the end of that particular story. Like, either go on to next season or just have that be your, your long miniseries. 
All right. It would have been horrible if they would have ended with part one of the two part season finale. Like if that twenty oh seventh episode was really their idea for the pilot for the second season, and they never shot oh, it, no. and it just ended with them getting shot, then you might have had a effect of motherfucker, you canceled my show. From yeah. Just about everybody, <laughs> other than it felt it actually like ended on a good. Guys, I get it. Yeah. Uh, season two, he goes back to San Francisco, becomes a lawyer, and it's Briscoe County Junior Special Victims Unit. <laughs> <laughs> As for 30 seasons, this will go into this day. <laughs> there you go. Mariska Hargitay shows up. Yeah, it's great. Ooh, yeah. I'm they not close e- to that. They can even do, you know, him having to fucking take care of a lawless San Francisco in 1904. You know, oh, whatever. shit. Big trouble in Little China. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> James Hong. James yes. Hong is in this shit. Yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. A great guest cast in this. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. County. Yeah. <laughs> and David Warner, too. David Warner was supposed oh, yeah. to be uh, Dumbledore's character from, from Unforgiven. And he was fucking cool as that shit. Like, I, I love David Warner. He could do no wrong for me. Plus the yeah. Delta Knights. Classic MST3K. Yes. Yes, uh, MST3K, Batman, of course, he's Rachel Ghoul. Uh, he's the TGRI guy on Ninja Turtles. I love him. Of course, I say Ice TG- Cream Man, I think. No. Was he an Ice Cream Man? <laughs> no, that was a Warner. That was Clint Howard, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but I think David Warner was in it too. Oh, yeah, he was um, the oh, shit, Depressor or something. He was and like, like Jan Michael Vincent was in it too for some reason. Uh, I gotta go fucking watch that. I bought the Rift Tracks and I have yet to fucking watch it. What? I know. And I didn't get to see it when it came out as a kid. And it was one of those things where I wanted to at the time. That was before I knew horror films were going to get stupid for a while. All right. Let's see here. Quinn Keating says this was such a fun series. It is. And it's Quinn, actually, I, I, I borrowed your set from you. So thank you for letting me watch it. <laughs> I have the DVDs. I just didn't want to dig them out. And let's see. AC Jaggard said on Twitter, criminally underappreciated show. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. This show is what TV kind of used to be an exciting thing that made you want to come back and watch it. It wasn't about ratings of, of or trying to get ratings by killing off one of your main characters every season. Like you just saying the S word. <laughs> yeah. You just wanted to see the next crazy stunt or, or, or gag that they were going to do. Like you wanted to see who the next bad guy was going to be. It's like watching Batman in 66. You know, there was always going to be some guest star as a bad guy. That's one of Bly's. It's a price. Oh, but he's egghead. What the hell is that? <laughs> it was excellent or excellent is what it was. God, I that's it. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we were talking about it has that drugstore novel radio serial kind of feel to it yeah it, it really does it's, it's like watching an old piece of like uh superman or batman the old captain america serials anything like that it's the same thing just with a picture entertaining that's the key yes and All engaging right. uh, it's it has to engage to be a true serial dime thing because it's not the writing you're coming back for. It's not, it's the adventure of listening. Yes. Yes. And in this case, you get Bruce Campbell doing stunts with it. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's gold. It was pure oh, gold. I have got to bring up. So I, this was my first time ever seeing this. My fiance Liz saw it previously, and this was her first time seeing Bruce ever. And Watching it the past few days, I've got to say that's a pretty Bruce performance of Bruce. He bruised it. Yeah. Peach She's, Bruce levels. Yeah, it, it's called just being charming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charismatic as hell. Yes, yeah. he is. Like, probably the most charismatic person that's alive in our lifetime, anyway. Yeah, like, he's got that. Yeah, je ne sais quoi. Uh, he, the language. <laughs> he's got he's, that James Garner effect. Yeah, he's he's just well. For one thing, he's the grooviest, and he really is oh, yeah. like just a legitimately nice dude, nice guy, and and he's smart as hell. So yeah. he's one of those people who like can definitely do no wrong in my eyes. He strikes me as very intelligent. It's if if you follow him on Twitter, yeah, he he comes up with a, a lot of neat like 
philosophical things. He'll get you thinking by uh, leading by example, going out on hikes or lollygagging, as he calls it, and just <laughs> take a picture of your feet, you know, staring out at whatever you're staring out at uh, out in nature. Love shit like that. Like you said, great guy. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got Blue 22 who says there are not enough hearts to demonstrate my love of Briscoe, but I'll try. And she's got like 50 hearts underneath that. Yeah, there's a lot of them. A lot, a lot. <laughs> she probably still wasn't enough, but she says the first series we ever bought on DVD, and that was back when it was expensive. Yep. <laughs> yes. Like, again, like we said, that was a commitment. Like, you had to know that you liked the show. <laughs> and then Race Archer says the moment where Billy Drago contemplates the, uh, his orb while explaining he's from the future, but does not do it in his Hollywood cowboy accent. <laughs> <laughs> Says it was just a perfect chef kiss for cinema. Yeah, like Billy Drago, he, people like him, David Warner, Bruce Campbell, everybody, all, most of the, the supporting cast or your guest stars are just people that like elevate whatever they're in. Yeah. And this was just a special, special thing. You think one reason the chemistry works so well is because, like we were just talking about, Bruce is a genuinely nice person. And if he's at the core of the show, then people just like Bruce. Well, your hero is only as good as the villain that he's opposed to. So you need yeah. somebody who can bring the evil and you can buy it. Otherwise, you just got Superman going up against some schmuck on the street. I mean, it, it doesn't play the same. Yeah, some carrot top ripoff passing his Lex Luthor or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I know uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember watching that movie, uh, going to a special preview of that movie, thinking like, okay, this is where they're 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 finally going to get it figured out. And then like scene one where like young Bruce Wayne is flying off at bats. I'm like, oh <laughs> fuck, <laughs> this is what we're signing up for. <laughs> I, I believe you said very loudly in the middle of the theater, fuck you. <laughs> That's great. Well but done. he strangely well didn't get shushed. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just kind of nodding their head like, yeah. 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 Well, what else can you do at that scene? I mean, <laughs> they're sitting there clapping. Excited. They're clapping. He's got a strong point. He's got a strong <laughs> point. <laughs> you know, valid. Valid. <laughs> Hey, let's see. Peter Maurith says, I loved that show and recently rewatched it. It's a shame that it only got one season. It was just good fun. Like you, you didn't have to take it too seriously. No. Nope. And no. And, and that was one of the things that made the puns so forgivable, if not even fun. Like, oh, yeah. Legitimately fun. Because oh, they were fun. Yeah. And, and I think it really showed that, that the cast was having fun doing it, too. Right. Yeah, and that comes back to the chemistry. Yeah. And I mean, not every show is capable of being engaging and fun when you watch 25 episodes over three or four days. You leave my small bill out of this, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time, even the ones that, and Liz wasn't around because she was on a job a few times. And just it was a great fun watching the show. And it kept my attention. I didn't wander off to do other things while I was watching it. Oh, yeah. The, this one, when I was rewatching it, it would constantly pull at me to not do, like, working on the podcast or any of our YouTube stuff. I, you know, I would just suddenly be, oh, I guess I'm watching this yeah. every single time. And even, like, the filler episodes, like, there's a charm and a heart to this show that just, it's really hard to replicate. This was lightning in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and you compare that with, for example, we're watching Supernatural and it's like, <laughs> okay, I watched the first like five minutes. So I find out what's going on. Then it's mm -hmm. like, cool. I got about 15, 20 minutes. I can go do some dishes, come back. Now a goddamn <laughs> thing's going to change. <laughs> I come back. Oh, did I miss anything? Nope. <laughs> All right. start checking, my, checking my emails and then I'll pause it if there's a good line. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Happened like yeah. three times. <laughs> it takes a lot, a lot for a show to keep my attention, especially when I, intend to do other things while I'm watching it. And like Jeff said, oh, I'm watching it. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just watching it. You know, I, I want to say I did the same thing. And for the most part, I did. But I learned this morning that I could play Magic the Gathering 
while watching Plex on the tablet at the same time. And I got to a point where it's like I lost probably like five, six matches in a row because I was so busy watching the show, just paying attention <laughs> and like missing, missing turns. Like so many people were probably pulling their hair out like fucking go. But yeah, I was I was like really into the end of this season. Well, getting towards the end of episode 19 and 20. Yep. Yeah, because that, to be perfectly honest, for one thing, I'd never seen it before. And, and finally seeing what happened to Blyer, there was a, a, a conclusion to their to their fight. Finally finding that out after God knows how many years. What is it? 30? Almost 30 mm-hmm. years? Like, I, I got fucking emotional. Like, some of the shit made me fucking cry at the end. Oh, it pulled at the heartstrings a few times. Yeah, for me yeah. Too. Like, yeah, especially if you got like uh, you know some little daddy issues and stuff going, like the the one where uh, our Lee Ernie comes back from the dead and stuff. Oh my god! Like, yes, this, this should be a completely ridiculous fucking premise, but they pulled it off. Yeah, yeah. That is not a man that I would have ever thought to make me emotionally cry like that. Yeah, like like <laughs> maybe like terrified cry, like sure, but. I've never seen him in a role where he was like a supportive dad like this before. And this was as close as he could get to that sitcom type dad, but it was really powerful stuff because it was him saying, son, I love you. And it's like, Oh, Oh. And maybe it was because it was Sergeant Ermy that uh, like, it just added some credibility to it. Yeah. I didn't recognize it was him. I still love the episode. So there you go. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Julius Carey at the end, basically giving up on life because he knows he's not compatible with the orb yep. that fucking destroyed me inside i'm like oh please fucking tell me that they're gonna fix this well and they if- they freaking laid on that moment while he's laying there dead for like moments and moments it's not just oh activate the orb boom gone they actually built up to that yeah like bruce made you feel bad by like putting his face in julius's face yep. Which is not a very manly thing to do, least of all 30 years ago. Yeah. But that's what you do when your brother is hurt. And, yeah. and that's what they were. And they yeah. sold that shit so well. And I was like, my wife's sitting there like, are, are you watching Briscoe County Jr. and crying? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> bitch! <laughs> well, and then, okay, then you compare a scene like that with, I remember watching the first Hunger Games movie. <laughs> Oh. And they're making uh, Rue dying. Spoiler alert. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> she dies and there's like a 15 minute fucking thing. And I'm like, she was on screen for two minutes. I don't even know who this bitch is. And like, oh, but right. you never read the books and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm watching the fucking movie. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had the same response. It's like, not everybody needs to read a book to go see a goddamn movie. Not all of us have that kind of time. Two hours for a movie or 20 hours for a book. Well, and sometimes the movie tips you off enough to just avoid the book completely. Yep. And uh, just another Rift Tracks plug. They did a great episode with Hunger Games. Yes, it's very good. (laughs) Yeah, I've seen that one. As somebody who worked for the Traveling Movie Exhibition, I am curious about that one. (laughs) Uh, it's, It's honestly not a bad movie. No, okay. I, I, uh, yeah, well, we we watched the movies. The the first okay. movie I think was the worst, and it was mostly just because uh, you don't know what was the fuck's Mark, going on. Yeah, like Martin Campbell, I think directed, it, but it was a lot of the, like the shaky cam and shit going on, and yeah. they're like trying to establish the world, but like I said, like with Rude dying and everybody's like losing their shit. And I'm like, it, whatever. It, like eight other kids died before her, and nobody right. gave a fuck. Who, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what world is this? <laughs> But then, but then the sequels, once everything's built and stuff, and I think they brought in another director, and it was like, oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, I'm getting it now. Oh, okay, now, okay, it's it's ripping off a bunch of other, you know, <laughs> other things. I, I get it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we're not here to talk about Hunger Games, are we? Do they have yeah. a series of that? <laughs> Hopefully not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, gotcha. <laughs> All kind of. Oh, we are. Didn't they say they're doing like a prequel Hunger yeah, series they are. or something? Yeah, oh, that's right. Because I remember Young President Snow or whatever was supposed to be a thing, and I'm like, who's gonna? Are they gonna have Kiefer? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I'd be down for that. When do you think they're gonna do the book written from the boys' point of view in the Hunger Games? Then never. Who gives a shit? Nah. Nah. I mean, it's wait, an established precedent with Twilight. Wait, is, is it a Reacher's perspective or yeah, the Alan Rich? 
Richson character mm. or or the the baby Hemsworth or yeah the baby kid I guess I don't, I don't know <laughs> Liam is like I don't know the first books about him hunting and <laughs> wanting, to, <laughs> wanting to bang Jennifer Lawrence nobody wants that perspective <laughs> well nobody wanted Edward's perspective either but the Twilight Woman did it so. Hmm. Well, you know, nobody gives oh, a hey, as long as long as people keep buying, I... <laughs> I just want you guys to know if you enjoy Twilight, I think less of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I, throwing this out there. I hate Twilight. The rift tracks are great. <laughs> I don't even. I dislike Twilight so much. I don't even want to watch the rift tracks. I'm oh, team it's... nobody. They can all kill themselves. No, it's team... one of the absolute best rift tracks. It really is. Team, team mustache dad is a thing. Like, yeah. Not interested. Oh, yeah. Team mustache dad. Yeah. It's look it if I so... want to watch somebody sigh for two hours, I'll go to France. No, it's not her sign, it's lime. There's how long is it is it where they're like running at mock speed through the fucking forest and he's like hopping over things? <laughs> and it's like in super fast forward. You hear Bill start singing <laughs> start singing yakety sax and you're like oh my god anyway <laughs> uh the last i'm sorry the last social media we had chad peterman chad who said that we need to mention julius carey playing lord bowler sure yeah, enough. that he was yes show sure enough yes absolutely that is the reason to watch anything that he's in like it's yeah culturally awesome great yeah all right <laughs> And that is what we had for social this week. And that's, we're coming up on the end of our podcast, but we're not going to leave quite yet. Steve and Izzy, where can people find you on social media? And what do you have coming up for a project that we can promote for you? Oh, well, uh, you can find us on all the major podcatchers under everything I learned from movies. Or hit us up directly on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies. Uh, right now in October, we're doing Gootober. So it's yeah. uh, it's uh, basically 80s uh, horror movies with lots of goo. Yes. Nice. Uh, you know, the stuff. Uh, society. Uh, the blob, society. Ghostbusters 2. Yeah, all kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, trash. <laughs> yeah good stuff and babe don't you have something going on this month on kickstarter yeah we're doing a kickstarter if you guys aren't aware Ooh. i am also an artist and illustrator and my favorite little side project is gary the unicorn he's a chubby happy unicorn and all of the unicorns are named gary and we're doing a kickstarter to get some spooky gary enamel pins made we have nice. already funded at the time of this here recording a glitter body pumpkin jack-o-lantern gary and his little eye is a jack-o-lantern like eye and his whole body is glitter and we have a mummy gary funded with glow in the dark bandages and then we just got a ghost mummy funded and his body also glows in the dark Ghost gary sorry ghost gary to, just too excited too excited and we <laughs> have a another mystery one coming because somebody wants to fully fund their own gary for 300 dollars. you can fully fund a gary you end up with 30 enamel pins you tell me what you want i will design the gary like that yeah yeah that awesome. so yeah on kickstarter under untidy venus a goddess who's bad at housekeeping look up uh, gary the unicorn enamel pins and we'll also be sure to throw some links below in our descriptions when we throw these up on social media too. Yay! Excellent. Guys, if you were going to design a, a spooky unicorn, what kind of spooky unicorn would you design? Oh, mm. One missing pieces of flesh here and there, kind of like mange, but with skin. <laughs> <laughs> like a zombie Gary? <laughs> yeah. A fat Michael Myers. Ah, a <laughs> Michael Myers Gary! So just, just, just wearing a Shatner mask, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or half ripped one or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but that it, shape you, you can't get away from because you can hear him coming up from behind you going. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like a uh, curse of Michael Myers, where he is a fat Michael Myers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for tuning in. We're also proud to announce an affiliation with FilmLore.no. If you love reviews, interviews, and so much more, please head over to filmlore.no and discover a whole new world. And last but certainly not least, we're running a contest to give away a complete new DVD set of Briscoe County Jr. The keyword is Comet. Remember, the keyword is Comet. Now stay tuned for our social media for details about the contest. That'll be out the same day we put out this episode. So take note, 
and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bum, bada bum, 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 bada bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and that's going to be our stinger. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I find something Kevin said again, like usual. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms. We got Facebook, Twitter. We are at Sons and Shadows. We're also on Instagram at Sons and Shadows Cast. We are at sonsandshadows.com. Thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you down the road. Tried really hard to put that repressed memory out. <laughs> <laughs> Can never escape. I'm going to lose it if I don't get it now.